Welcome to Beyond Overeating by Wholesome Lifestyle Project, the overeating podcast, where I'll be showing up weekly to share with you what I've learned during my binge eating recovery, helpful tools such as yoga, mindfulness, and energy medicine. My name is Stell, and my purpose is to inform and ed- educate so that you can fast track your recovery in healing your relationship with food and finally trust yourself around the peanut butter jar. Join me as I share top tips, my struggles and triumphs to help inspire or just entertain. Remember, there's nothing wrong with you if you can't stop overeating. That's why I'm here to guide you along the way. And welcome back to the Beyond Overeating podcast by Wholesome Lifestyle Project. I'm your host, Stel Coombe Heath, and I'm super excited to have a special guest with me today, Kylie Nell, uh, all the way from South Africa, my home country. Um, And Kylie is here today to talk about her life after her eating disorder. Uh, Like me, she also struggled with binge eating disorder, and we'll dive right into that. So welcome, Kylie. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It's been a long time coming. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. So Kylie and I have met probably a year and a half ago online and we have been chatting. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've been following each other and supporting each other's businesses. And yeah, it's just amazing to see Kylie's transformation, um, her vulnerability, sharing about her um, history with the fitness industry and her eating disorders. Um, so we'll, we'll dive into that further in through the episode. But let me tell you a little bit about Kylie and then we can get into um, the juicy bits of, of the uh, podcast. So Kylie is an intuitive business and money mentor uh, with a soul-led mission to help female entrepreneurs activate their purpose to embody leadership and expand their mental health, spiritual and wealth consciousness. Her modalities include angelic guidance, human design, quantum healing, and of course, sales marketing and launching expertise. I just love all that that mix. It just <laughs> sounds so <laughs> I loved writing it. I won't lie. I was like, I was feeling very sassy. I was like, yeah, this hits home. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's just like, I think, you know, once we dive into this um, self-development phase and uh, we start infusing that into our businesses it can just like be such a, a an amazing space to be in and you know we're just so eager to teach what we we've learned so, so I just love that you get to mix them all up and you know just create mm-hmm. create like amazing transformations with that so Kylie did you want to just tell us a little bit about your story um h- how you got here speaking to me today on this podcast Oh my goodness, where to begin? <laughs> so <laughs> I think probably going back way to the beginning, um, I've always known to some capacity I would be a healer, um, specifically working with women. And this kind of play out, played out when I finished school and started looking at university and all these things. I went into psychology, first neuroscience, and then I realized, you know, the fairy child in me needs to play. <laughs> <laughs> we need to move over into psychology. Um, and then obviously the dream was clinical psychology. That was kind of like my vision. I'll, I'll never forget the letter I wrote to the Dean. still saying that I will fully complete this until I have my doctorate degree and open a practice. Well, needless to say, that kind of happened and did not happen at the same time, because here <laughs> we are. <laughs> um, and it's throughout just, you know, I think also being in varsity and finding myself, finding my identity, um, having kind of room to just I would like to say breathe because I grew up in Namibia so it was quite a small town very small setting um very small-minded thinking and people always I I don't want to say they suffocate you but there's this feeling of there's no growth like you go to school you get a degree you come home you build a family that's it there's nothing really beyond it and now moving to then South Africa a completely different country not knowing anyone I was like cool like, let's actually just expand and see what happens. And throughout school, I also just kind of struggled a lot with my weight. And that was always an on-off thing. Um, not really understanding, like, hormones coming into play and all those things. And 
lo and behold, I think it was the first or second year of varsity, more towards the end of my first into second year of varsity. I met this woman because my boyfriend I was with at the time was like, no, he wants to, you know, get the muscles and be big and, you know, that kind of thing. And <laughs> the guy he met, his wife was a fitness model. So obviously I was then in that circle and I still remember her looking at me as chubby and shy and introverted as I was. And she was like, you need to step on stage. You need to compete. And there was this moment of like, yeah, I know that's not happening. Like, I'm not going to be, I can't even be in a bikini, like (laughs) in my own four walls. How am I going to do that in like an auditorium full of people? But I think it's, it kind of just sunk in and it was something I just held on. I'm like, but what if, and just kind of allowed, I get goosebumps. I kind of allowed myself to dream. And I was like, okay, but what if this was a reality and started sharing my, my weight loss journey more on social media, started following a lot of fitness module uh, models on Instagram as well. So I kind of saw there was this reality beyond what we know to be true, mm-hmm. especially in South Africa. And I was like, I can actually reach people like globally. Like this is a thing. Like this is really a thing. And I just started feeding that dream more. Um, and I think the beauty was when I then stepped onto stage the first time in 2015. So this was about oh, two years of the journey in the making. I think there was just this beautiful full circle moment of having women reach out to me that just started picking up my journey along the way, telling me like I inspired them to create change, to dream bigger, especially people that were at school with me. They're like, you showed us that there's more to life than what we're just exposed to. And that kind of lit a flame in me. Mm. And I was like, okay, let's keep this going. But for me, where I think the self-sabotaging then started happening is instead of actually ever working through like childhood like trauma I went through being bullied a lot you know I had a few like obviously childhood wounds and all these things I kind of replaced the healing with okay let's go to the gym let's build like the exterior that represents the strong air- interior I always said but actually it was just a shield I wasn't really processing anything and I had this kind of mentality that the stronger I look, the skinnier I am, the more photos I post, the more likes I get, all these kinds of things, the more prerogative I am, the more accepted I'll be and I'll be Mm. healed. And this vicious cycle kind of continued at the background with an eating disorder that obviously just became worse and worse. Um, I had very bad binge eating tendencies and then I would just pop laxatives to kind of compensate because I was like, well, shit, I need to, I need to compete or I have a photo shoot coming up. Like I can't be bloated. There was a lot of emphasis also placed on my weight. So, you know, it's, it was so many things coming into play. And then 20, it kind of started in 2016 when depression started kicking in. And then 2017 was kind of, I would like to say the poor poor hit the fan. (laughs) That was the moment when life was like, we need to strip this apart Um, Mm -hmm. because my bodybuilding career reached its absolute peak. Um, I was featured in magazines. I was sponsored by supplement companies. Um, You know, I, I kind of skip, I went up to divisions. So I was in the fitness, um, was it fitness, not fitness model, but body fitness. There we go. I was in the body fitness. It's just under the bodybuilding division. So like, there was this big uproaring of, oh, she's coming back after 2015 competing because again, after 2015 show, I picked up weight again. And then I'd go through another weight loss phase to compete mm-hmm. in 2017. And there was this immense sense of pressure and I competed. I won my shows. I won overalls. Like there was, it looked so good on the outside. Like my plan was very much so to go to worlds and all these things. But on the inside, I was completely broken. Like my eating disorder had spiraled completely out of control. I was incredibly depressed, very anxious, suicidal, all these things. And there was just this realization after I competed the last time in August, 2017. I would like to say it was one of my worst and best shows at the same time. One of the worst, because I remember being on stage and the coordinator still looks at me and he's like, what's going on? This is not the Kylie we know. And I think it literally became so unbearable. And I don't know if you can resonate with this, but it became so unbearable that I couldn't hide it anymore. Like I couldn't hide my pain Mm. and people could see it in my eyes. Like, I mean, even if I look back at photos now, I'm like, 
there's nothing going on in your soul yeah and it was just that I just got full body goosebumps again mm. so this is very aligned for me to share this <laughs> on the podcast <laughs> and there was just this penny drop moment of okay we need to sort this out whatever is happening you've kind of reached your peak externally you saw that wasn't what you were looking for mm. now let's go let's go within and that's kind of where my healing journey started and I just I started pivoting my you know, my online journey with such, because in about 2017 as well, I studied a personal training and nutrition, um, just kind of certificates in the background, because I thought that would kind of be my calling to go into fitness coaching. And I just started pivoting from there. So I created eight week challenges around like mental health as well, per se, and not just purely focusing on like meal plans and training programs, because the moment I came out, and I think that's always kind of been I think my blessing at the curse at the same time is I'm quite vulnerable and vocal <laughs> about my experiences because I realized, you know, up until the point of actually recognizing my, my eating disorder and things, no one was ever, it was never communicated to me. It was nothing spoken of in my family. Like we didn't, I was too scared to communicate it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to create that space where women, women feel safe to open up and they can feel empowered through their disempowerments. And it was shocking to me when I saw when I came out, you know, speaking about depression, how many girls my age and younger were on multi antidepressants. Mm. And I was like, okay, there is clearly like a need for this. And that's kind of where my like journey started. Yeah, you know, and I think we, when you're in that space of that eating disorder, you don't think anything's wrong you know you just kind of carry on and carry on and like you said and then all of a sudden you reach this point where it's like what am I doing <laughs> um, but you are you completely like you know you appear to be okay on the outside and um, but inside you're just raw and broken and um, this really does lead to depression. Like, you know, I just, I, I don't know me how many times I burst into tears, you know, like by myself, like this was a secret also, you know, so you're not sharing this with anyone. Um, and it can just be so um, kind of just a space where we really, really feel so empty and alone. And that very often feeds into depression um, so yeah, I'm glad that you were there for these beautiful women to just actually support them from that perspective. Um, and I think you've been doing that ever since, you know, you've just been a, a kind of a guiding light for, for people. Um, you know, I know your, your uh, focus has shifted, but, you know, I can see that you still care about those kind of things and, you know, you're still open and vulnerable about that as well. Yeah, definitely so much so. I think, you know, it's kind of, I've always said my business has evolved as I have evolved. And I think if I was doing then what I'm actually doing now, I wouldn't be here. There would be some other quantum explosion within me and I would probably <laughs> just not be here. Um, but it's actually so beautiful because, you know, even in 2020, I feel like although it was such a raw and very hectic year, it was also just such a, a year of coming home. I think a lot of people started looking within. I kind of see 2020 as the year that, that, you know, the earth just purged and anything that no longer aligns needs, needs to leave as harsh yeah. as that reality is. Mm. And that was kind of like a very big healing fear for me. Like I actually wrote, um, I wrote a post about it this week and one of the emails I sent out was very much about just reflecting on like, the amount of healing that actually happened. And when December hits, I gave myself three weeks of work, which I, I don't usually do. I think it's also just the managing in me. <laughs> but I'm like, girl, you need to sleep. Like you just need to not think. And a lot of integration happened. And in that yeah. process of integration, it's almost as if all the healing that had happened over the years, I could finally just like close that loose end, almost like put the, the <laughs> ribbon on the box and be like, okay, now now we can actually carry out our mission. And that's kind of what's led me to like the big changes that have happened this year. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like we think that we need to be in that masculine energy to push in order for us to heal. 
but uh, you know, even in like recovery where I, I um, help my clients, it's usually about taking that step back and allowing the healing to happen in the body, in the mind, you know, in our um, soul. Uh, and energetically, that doesn't just happen overnight. It does take time and we need time off. We need to like take in the rain. So I love that you took three weeks off. <laughs> <laughs> how did you, um, how did you find coming back to back into things? Because let me tell you, I struggled. <laughs> <laughs> in the first two weeks of January. <laughs> I was it was actually really like interesting I was at one stage I was like in one part of me I was very keen and then the other side of me I was like I'm selling my shit and moving to Bali which hold me true this is happening I'm just waiting for the borders to open <laughs> but you know what it was actually just this immense feeling of coming home you know in December like you said, the moment we step back, we finally receive what we need to receive. And this was a big lesson I learned because, oh, I got this once again. This is a big lesson I learned because, you know, when we are always so busy, we're just distracting ourselves. We're not allowing anything to integrate. And the moment we step back, like in December, I was like, oh, wow, what, what do I actually want to do? And I had this incredible three hour, just like activation session, if I can call it as such where I just opened up about my truth. And that's where the quantum healing came through. I mean, I was busy beginning of the year, just like typing in my website, like the new pillars of my business. And I just typed out quantum healing. And I was like, what? Okay, we're doing this. So the beginning of the year for me getting into things was kind of as if it was coming home. And then someone just put like, like a pedal to the metal and it's just like, just switched forward. I can't explain it, but it's it's been exciting and also just like a lot of learning is happening. I feel like a kid again. So. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's yeah, I think you know, once you step into that, it's just like you'll just keep going and learning and expanding. And mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, you know, that's what's amazing about like getting into those um modalities is the more you the more you learn, um, you know, the more you want to know. And uh, yeah, it's such a beautiful way for us to transform. So um, tell me, like, obviously, you've now fully recovered from your um, binge eating disorder. And it's been a couple of years, you've kind of um, healed those wounds. How has your new relationship with food and your body led you to where you are today and how you show up in the world, in your business, in your personal life, that kind of thing? Mm, I love this question. So as you were speaking, the first thing that came to me, like came to me to mind is even being recovered as such, it's still a conscious effort every single day. Mm. Like it's, it's not something that we just, wake up and we're, we're, we're just recovered. I know I was saying this to a client one day and I told her like, it's really about waking up and being decisive and being like, okay, you know, this is the reality I want to create. So with that being said, there are still times where I need to catch myself where I'm like, okay, it's so weird. So aligned. I wrote this in my journal this morning when I was writing about things to release. And I realized that something that I, you know, that still happens to me on a day-to-day -day basis is making that distinguish between, okay, why am I eating? Is what is this purpose like serving? And am I just like avoiding either being present or am I trying to fill something within me? That's like, I'm not, I'm trying to avoid dealing with. So I think that's been a huge thing for me is like, even just post, I'd like to say post my eating disorder, I've just de developed a much deeper sense of self-awareness, mm. which has allowed me to understand why I've gone, like I've pu pushed myself into food. I mean, it could have been anything else. Like, mm. thankfully it was, thankfully it was just food. It could have been <laughs> like anything else really. Um, and just developing a much greater awareness of myself, understanding my emotions, understanding my body and developing, I think, self-love and self-worth. Um, that is really unexplainable to someone unless you've gone through that journey of an eating disorder and you understand that mm -hmm. self-sabotage to then be like, okay, I now fully love myself. I like, I respect myself. I see the worst within myself and just infusing that into every, every other aspect of my life. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love that. And that, that, you know, that's always what I try and explain to to people who are new to recovery, or even my clients, you know, they get frustrated if you know, they haven't been perfect. Uh, and they hate like, you know, like the week didn't go by and they, um, they might have had a small binge. Um, still and they're like why is this happening I'm like well recovery is not a straight line I love that picture with the um, uh, what everyone thinks recovery is and it's this beautiful line up into the clouds and then but it's actually underneath it's this massive whirlwind of things that you go through and it's years for some people it's years and years of um, behavior and years and years of um, negative like um, beliefs about themselves um, that you need to break through and you know there are going to be days where you kind of lose your coping mechanisms it might not me- mean that you binge but it might just be that you make choices that you don't want to make you know and that's mm-hmm. fine it's bringing in that compassion and like you say reflecting inwards and really going going deep into you know why am I eating is this is it that pattern again? And how can I support myself? So yeah, I love that. Beautiful. Exactly. No, exactly. So I'm going to get into the juicy stuff. And um, because uh, I don't know, I, I love this kind of stuff. And I've touched on human design, you know, I am an energy healer, uh, you actually reading my chart for me this week, which I'm super excited about. But um, how did you end up getting into, you know, from from business coaching uh, and teaching people sales and marketing? I know you've always had that kind of energy and spiritual side to your business, but how did you get into the angelic guidance, the human design and quantum healing? Sure. So I think I'd start with the first ones, kind of the angelic guidance. Um, That's always been with me. Um, Very much as a child of I've had experiences that are, they cannot be explained by logic, to be quite honest. <laughs> um, and obviously we don't understand these things. So we kind of dim them down. And ironically enough, in 2016, I had quite a few events happen. And this was, I would like to say, this was kind of the catalyst for my depression. But at the same time, when my depression started, this is when my spiritual awakening started. And this happens for a lot of people is they think that becoming spiritually woke is, I think also with healing is a sexy process. It's not because we need to face whatever demons we've been hiding in our closets for lack of better words and bring them out and be like, okay, we're either going to play or if this is going to continue. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of when I started becoming more intuitive. And after I would, I would probably think about 2018, there was this beautiful moment and I can very much credit this to meeting my husband as well, because he created a lot of space for me and a lot of safety that I I never really had before in relationships or, you know, growing up as a child. So he created a lot of space where I could explore myself and kind of see, okay, but where am I going with things? And as 2017 hit when I had depression and I decided to go for help, the first thing that obviously gets given to us and there's no shame to it is like antidepressants, even though I've got a love-hate relationship with them. And it was about, I would probably think the midst of 2018, because my husband and I had been dating for a few months then. Within that period, I saw a psychiatrist. I changed my antidepressants because I realized the ones I was initially given weren't weren't actually the correct ones for me. Changed it about two months into into my new, new dose. And I was just like, I'm done. Like, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I feel so disconnected from myself, my body, Like Mm. anyone who's been on antidepressants knows it numbs you entirely. I mean, absolutely everything. And I'm like, this is not me. And I still remember looking at these tablets. I do not advocate this. So please don't, don't take my advice. This is what I did. As I looked at my tablets and I threw it all away. I was like, I am absolutely done. Like this is, this is no longer. And that's when my spiritual like journey started happening. And when I became more intuitive, and it really hit its peak last year where I was like, okay, this is really a thing. Um, so that's how the angelic guidance started coming in. And I only started really incorporating it in my business end of last year with some of my clients. And then welcome to the Aquarian age 2021. I was like, we are fully <laughs> stepping out of the closet. <laughs> so it's something I'm very open with right now. Um, the human design per se, I think has also just been a life purpose. It's something I actually did with my very first round of business clients back in 2019, but very basic, like basic AF. 
<laughs> because I wasn't ready to take in all that knowledge yet. Um, and then again, midst of 2020, I just had this like download and I kind of like to say my guides speak to me and they're like, you need to be doing more, which is very evident because I wasn't feeling fulfilled just as another business coach. I was like, mm-hmm. I have always stood to empower a woman. And I noticed a pattern where a lot of women that come to me, I almost like to think of like myself as a catalyst. They'd come to me thinking this is what they're going to do with their business, thinking this is, you know, their strengths and, you know, they've healed from X, Y, Z. I kind of unravel them and then they, they walk away fully stepping into their purpose. Like I've had countless amounts of women come to me with one business, strip it to the ground, start something completely different that they actually feel more aligned with and then walking away. Mm. And realizing this pattern, I was like, okay, but I want to go deeper because I've always loved woman empowerment and just helping women build up. And first thought it was NLP. So it's kind of like the hot topic for every person to do. Went into NLP and kind of read through it, but it didn't feel like this full body yes. Mm. Like it was something was just like, no, this is not it. And I kid you not, I was sitting on the couch again when we just allow ourselves space to not think. <laughs> and I just got this download and it was like, you need to be doing human design and practicing. And I was like, cool, I'm doing it. And, you know, I fell absolutely in love with it, found an incredible nine month certification um, that also certifies me in astrology, which is like super exciting. So one day wow. I'll do your astrology chart too. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited for that. And yeah, like the quantum healing, like I said, babe, literally January, I was busy typing out my website. I just wrote out the words quantum healing. I was like, okay, let's search this, found a quantum healing certification. And literally everything I've hoped for was like just there. And I was like, okay, we found it. Like we've just come home. Oh, amazing. I love how these things just find you. And yeah, it's just beautiful how... Um, yeah, like sometimes it just will divinely come and you're like, what the hell? Like, this is not, I was just doing this for fun, but now, now it seems like it's, it's my thing. So (laughs) I love that. But like, let's just take a a small step back. And uh, Mm -hmm. for those people who don't know what human design or quantum healing is, can you just tell us a little bit about what they are Mm -hmm. and how they work? Maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I like to kind of explain human design as like your energetic blueprint. So you can kind of imagine that it's your absolute energetic blueprint of how you need to be navigating the world around you. It very much is something that when people read it, and this is always my hopes for any person who sees like an analysis of their charts, it hits home and they're like, someone's just confirmed everything that's always been within me. (laughs) So human design is a combination of physics. It's a combination of astrology And essentially what we take is we take your exact time of birth, where you were born um, and the location, yeah, where you were born. And with that, we can actually pull up an entire chart and see what your inner, how your energy system operates. And I mean, it goes so deep into looking at your like life's purpose, how you make decisions. Um, For some of us, it can even help us explain why we have a few like fears that keep popping up, but it's just, it's part of your blueprints. Um, And that to me is really beautiful about human design and quantum healing is kind of just that layer deeper where, especially with the quantum healing, I'll go into more depths into being like, okay, but what is it in beyond the 3D reality? So when we start extending to the 5D, 6D, 7D, because there's about 12 dimensions, we go deeper and we're like, okay, let's heal like the deeper energetic layers Um, because we carry about seven generations of trauma with us. So Mm -hmm. something that I've been doing with my clients is very much generational healing. So with my angelic and intuitive guidance, I then go deeper back into generations. We skip timelines and we heal from that perspective. So the quantum healing is really about extending into your energetic field per se, and then helping you actually just bring together, learn the karmic lessons you need to, so that you can fully live out your purpose in this lifetime. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like just so incredible because, um, you know, I haven't really done a lot of, um, regression, um, past life regression healing or anything, but when I've done them, like, like the smallest little shifts would just be like, Oh, that feel, just feels so much better, you know? So I can just imagine mm. if you had to delve into that even deeper and deeper and, 
um, with human design, I kind of know um, where I'm at on my design. I kind of um, got, you know, certain things really make sense to me on my chart. So I'm projector for those of you in human design, um, if you know what human design is all about. Um, and yeah, like some, some of the things just really make sense. Um, others don't, uh, you know, <laughs> but I think I'll get into, um, you know, understanding it a little bit more, you know, towards this year, especially after I get my reading from you. Um, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a lot of golden nuggets in there that I can just um, start applying. No, definitely, definitely. And I think the beautiful thing about, especially because you're a projector, it's weird. I attract a lot of projectors. I would probably say 80% of my charts are projectors. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you guys are such beautiful, sacred beings. Like you've got such a sacred energy source. And I think, you know, the beauty of human design that kind of hit home for me is for those who are not like familiar with it, we get four different types. And this essentially just explains your aura pro profile. So your energy profile. And we get like projectors, manifestors, generators, and then manifesting generators sit in that like category two and then reflectors. And I think something that really hit home for me is when I learned about my design as a manifesting generator, it just, it kind of gave, gave me that confirmation that I'm a, or that permission even that I could just continue living like I am. Because I find that, you know, especially in the online space, there's this big buzzword about you know, working less and making more and just work the three hour days and four hour days. And that seems to be the big aspiration everyone's pushing to. I was there too. Until I saw my profile, I'm like, look, as the generator type, I'm literally the like working life force, like the working bees <laughs> of humanity. And we have access to sacral energy, which a lot of types don't have, which is literally like your absolute fire in your body. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I can go days with working. Like literally, I remember when I created my one short course, I was up till 3, 4 a.m. in the morning for three days. I created the course in three days. And I was like, this feels so aligned, like so good. <laughs> and I wasn't working three hours a day where projectors like you guys need to manage your energy. So for you, like you can actually get so much done in three hours when you channel your energy. Mm. Where for me, it may take me six hours, but it's just because I have that capacity. So it helped me understand and kind of give myself permission and forgive myself for not fitting into these categories that everyone seems to push themselves in and being like, cool, I can just like authentically be me and do what feels good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I look forward to that chart. And, you know, I think um, if you don't mind, Kylie, maybe we can add a little bit of a write up on, um, you know, human design and what it's all about you know maybe from if you've got Definitely. a blog post or something that we can just share in the show notes so people can read more about that um Definitely. beautiful so um I like to ask all my guests this question because, you know, this is a podcast about, you know, learning how to appreciate your body and, you know, just like learning to live with it instead of being at war with it all the time. So can you share with us one way in which you like to appreciate your body? Hmm. I would definitely say, oh, you're going to laugh at me. Living my bougie lifestyle. That's <laughs> 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 literally what my husband loves to call it. It's like really appreciating my body has come to allowing myself to enjoy the finer things in life. Mm. Like if, you know, for such a long time, I was like, okay, you know, don't buy that dress because it's whatever amount or, you know, just don't, don't drink that bottle of wine. Like it's, it's, it was a presence. You need to keep it for forever. So I think it kind of sinks in with also not delaying happiness. I kind mm. of allowing myself to appreciate the finer things in life. Like if it makes me feel good, like I literally go as true as Bob every month, I go for like a chemical peel for my face and a facial and I buy my face products because it like that just to me feels good. And just by doing those small things, it's like, just not waiting for that moment or that permission slip to like spoil myself. Cause that was a huge thing for me when I was like, with my eating disorder, the moment I reach that weight, then I'll buy myself the dress. No, yes. screw that. I can buy myself the dress now. <laughs> so, so that's kind of the way I appreciate myself. 
<laughs> oh, I, I love that, you know, and I think it's, it's so important for us to invest in ourselves, you know, even if it's just a little thing that you buy yourself as a little treat, you know, we always mm. spoil everyone else with, with gifts or compliments and, but we kind of, kind of get um, quite uh, space on that on ourselves. So yeah, I love that. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Kylie, for coming along oh, and sharing you. your journey. Where can everyone find out more about you and what you do and all the amazing things that you are creating right now? Oh, so definitely I'm always on the gram. So it's Kylie double underscore now. Um, my podcast is coming out soon. So 16th Yay! of Feb. So I know I'm so <laughs> excited. So excited. <laughs> Finally, oh <laughs> we had this conversation. We were like, we are just doing the damn thing. Um, and that's going to be the Moonstone Alchemy podcast. Um, and then, yeah, also opening up a new Facebook group soon. That's also going to be the Moonstone Alchemists. So that will kind of be the three places where people can connect. Amazing. We will put all the links um, in the show notes. And uh, once you've got the podcast up, give me the link and we will just update, update the show notes with that as well. Um. So... <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so, so much, Kylie, for coming to share your journey and just all the amazing things that you're creating. Um, I just um, love your story and I'm just super excited to have had you on my show. <laughs> oh, no, this was incredible. Thank you so much. Ah, thank you. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. It's evening for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks so much. And for those of you uh, listening um, to the show, please like and subscribe from wherever you're listening. Make sure to come and find Kylie, find, uh, find out what she's doing and look out for her new Facebook group. I'm sure you'll get a lot of value out of there. Um, as always, make sure that you recommend and share this episode with your friends. And I will see you back here for the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget to share this with all your friends. You can do this by adding this to your Instagram story and tagging me at Wholesome Lifestyle Project or by simply telling them about it. If you could rate and review on whatever platform you are listening, this will go a long way in helping me get this podcast out there so that I can share my message and help as many women out there struggling with food issues as I can. Don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram on Wholesome Lifestyle Project or connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Estelle Heath, and that's where you'll find me on LinkedIn. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.